Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How. And in this video, a little bit different, a little bit different, we're going to be doing a bit of a mini review on the Evercool Travelmate 80 litre dual zone. Let's get started. Now the precursor to getting one of these was of course the purchase of the D-Max itself. And you can check out the rest of the videos at the top if you haven't already. Now the problem with a lot of dual cabs is the fact that with these roller shutters on, and certainly that is the case for the D-Max as well, you've only got so much space. Under the actual roller shutter itself, you've got about 490 millimeters or only 490 millimeters, but it's even less than that because you have this bar that runs all the way along. And the problem with that is you're losing about 200 millimeters. So from there to down the bottom here, if you have the tub liner, you only have about 455 millimeters to play with of height so that something can actually slide underneath. And that's where this fit the bill for me because you still get the dual zone functionality, but it's quite squat. It's quite, uh, quite stubby and short. So it still slides under, no problem. So feature wise, this thing is an 80 litre, as you can see there, and it is split into a dual zone, which is pretty cool. You can have one as freezer, one as a fridge, you know, both fridges, both freezers, whatever you want to go with there. It has a pretty cool lid design where it is dead flat pretty well on the top there, as you can see. And then it has these cool hinges like this, and they can be open from either side. So they're a nice, locking mechanism as well with some stainless across there so so it has a really positive sort of latching mechanism and you can really tell with the things open or shut and of course you can open it either way which is pretty cool depending on your application i reckon that's pretty awesome and even remove the things entirely just like that so pretty awesome pretty easy to use as well now it is fully polypropylene plastic type construction which i reckon is pretty awesome because there's going to be no rusting here and then any of the fittings and fixtures there are all stainless as well so now of course the good news with a dual zone is the fact well, that you have dual zones uh, they are a little bit different though because on one side you have the full compartment on this side the compressor lives in here so it's a little bit compromised in its space and i've been using this side as the freezer because you've got two different sort of basket settings here this one's not as much space in this side you have the full the full basket the full size much more room in this side now the baskets inside are really easy to get to because the fact you can actually get your fingers in here i've had some other fridges where they're right up and they follow all the way around so you can't you find it difficult to sort of grip so these are pretty cool because they do have that little section i have found though because of where the lid is you can't lift them all the way out as you can see it's not too big a deal because it's just a matter of taking the lid off which is really easy to do. And then out comes a basket, no worries at all. On this side, which I'm calling the freezer side, just cause it's sort of the L shape, is you've got two different baskets. So there's a smaller one there and then the, the deeper bin there. Inside as well, you've got these LED, blue LED lights, which are pretty good at nighttime as well. Gives you plenty of light to see what's going on inside. Now the lids themselves are pretty good. They are super thick there. So great amount of insulation that's going on on the top. And then the seals themselves, as you can see there, are all the way around the lid. And they look like they've got a bit of a, a double seal on, on sort of a foam type rubbery seal there as well, which is pretty good. You can see that around the lip here as well. There's a really nice channel for that seal to, to seal into, no worries. So the handles themselves are quite sturdy. We've got steel running through the guts of this, which is awesome to see. So you're not gonna have any problems whatsoever using that as a tie down point, depending on how you're gonna be mounting the fridge. Now the power options that come with are your standard sort of PC plug really that, that comes with all fridges. You have a Anderson plug to a cigarette lighter converter because then you do get an Anderson plug lead that is Anderson plug on both sides. That's pretty cool because you don't have just one of those cigarette lighter type plugs. They actually come with a full Anderson plug for the fridge itself, which I think is awesome to see because no more is your socket or your fridge plug falling out in the middle of a trip or banging around in, in the back of the tub or anything like that. You get there and your fridge is hot, None, nothing like that. So I think Anderson plug is pretty, pretty awesome to see. And then your normal AC plug as per usual. 
Now the controls are a pretty sort of simple affair. You have your USB plug there. That's a, a half an amp. It'd be great to see that as a two amp, but is what it is. It's good to see it anyway. You have your override switch, which is pretty common on most fridges as well. Then as far as your buttons go, we've got an on off set and plus and minus, and that's pretty much it. Functionality wise, you can see the little, the little sort of L shape. That's setting this zone here. And the one on the left is the far zone over there. So when you're setting it, it's pretty straightforward. We're setting the temperature up and down on the left zone, this guy over here. And then we hit set and then up and down on this one here. Set again is gonna allow you to choose whether you want centigrade or Fahrenheit for the one country in the world that uses that. But once you've set that down the bottom here, you've got your high, medium and low of voltages, which is pretty cool. That's giving you that battery protection depending on what battery system you are running. More on that soon dual battery 12 volt setup living in there shortly it might be out by the time you've seen this so check it out if, if it is and then that's it that's it for the settings once you've locked that in it does give you a voltage readout on your actual battery itself so that's that's kind of handy to see and then the all important dimensions when you have limitations like I did in the D-Max we have a height of about 410 to the top of the handles a width of about 535 and a length including the handles of about one meter pretty much on the nose and without the handles you're looking at about 910. And then finally you can get an ever cool travel bag which is designed specifically for the fridge does have all the cutouts, the vent slots, the section in here for your controllers and that sort of thing. And it has a bunch of pockets where you can store things like your cables and what have you. And then power usage for this thing, I found it so far to be to be pretty good. It's not using too much juice. This is the kind of reading you're going to see when you first turn the fridge on and it's running at that sort of full tilt. So anywhere I'm finding from, from around that five and a half, sometimes a little bit lower, but normally about the five and a half amps or about 70 odd watts, as you can see there. When the thing's idling, it's using bugger all. It's literally using about 0.1 of an amp, something like that. So power draw, I think, is pretty well on par for all of the big name, decent fridges out there, which is pretty awesome to see. So pros and cons. Let's kick it off with the stuff that I really like about the fridge. I love the fact that it comes with Anderson plugs. I think that's that's awesome to see, particularly if you've got a 12 volt setup or anything else that already uses these. It's just nice and convenient. The way they click together is just so much better than your standard cigarette sort of lighter plug where you're gonna be plugging that thing in. It's, it's, you know what they're like, they jiggle around and they fall out. Whereas having a proper Anderson plug here like this, you know that when the thing is clipped in the side, it's not going anywhere. So I love the lid design. I think that is just fantastic in the way that you've got these nice solid bars here, the way that it latches as well. You, you can really easily close it and open. That sounds really simple and silly, I know, but I've had fridges in the past where you kind of, you kind of go to close it, but the, the latch is on the outside and, and you, you can never, you really got to jam, jam hard on it to, to make sure the thing's shut. And this is just, just great because you barely need any pressure and it really latches, you know, good certainty that the thing's shut. So obviously the size, 80 liters is, is plenty for you and the family. That's, that's pretty awesome. And I think it's, it's quite a good shape. Looks pretty cool. I like the fact that it's the polypropylene sort of plastic. I think that's great. Most of my fridges I've had have been this material and it's, it's just great that it's really hardy. You can kind of knock it around without, without too much stress. So I think that's pretty cool. And probably more than anything, obviously the cooling performance itself, it gets down to temp really quickly, which, which obviously is, is pretty cool to see. Now the couple of cons in my opinion sort of starts here I think. It's saying it's Wi-Fi enabled and I was really looking forward to that because previous fridge I had I needed a separate little component to be able to monitor the temps in the fridge. Kind of get a little bit obsessive with is with monitoring live temps and that sort of stuff as you'll see from my, my the towing towing video that I did on the channel a little while ago. Certainly for the the Android app it is just 
it's not even worth I, I won't even bother showing you I think they put it together a long time ago and it just hasn't been updated since the app itself is ridiculously simple and I like it wouldn't even connect another con which is a little odd to me I've reached out to Evercool on this I haven't heard back from them at the moment but I'll update the description if I do it doesn't appear that you can turn one of these sides off. So what I mean by that is you gotta have them both running anytime you use the fridge, which just seems seems really odd and seems crazy to me because every other fridge that I've had, uh, the dual zones, you can run one or the other. So if we're just heading up the beach for a day, for example, and we're, we're not going camping, we don't need a freezer set up, what have you, you can just run one side, save a bit of power, that sort of thing, save a bit of juice on the compressor. But I haven't been able to find a way, there's no mention in the instructions, how you can turn one of the sides off. You gotta have them both running. I'm hoping that there is a little setting there. Like I said, if I hear back from Evercool on how to do that, I'll update the description. And then finally, the only other thing isn't actually to do with the fridge, it's to do with the travel bag. This thing, while it's you know designed for the fridge, of course, and that part's cool it just is the most flimsy sort of thing put together known to man it's it's about a hundred bucks as well so i'm just not seeing this thing lasting very long at all it's it's doesn't have too much in the way of insulation it's super thin and sort of super flimsy so the other thing is the lid it's just a single panel for the lid so you've got to take the whole section off to be able to just get into one of the sides what i'm probably going to do is give it a give it a snip straight down the gut so that i can still operate the lids independently without having to pull the whole top of the lid off so there you go guys a simple mini review of the evercool travelmate 80 liter dual zone i hope that you found that helpful and it helped inform you if you're looking at getting a fridge particularly at getting one that's a certain height to fit in your dmax or any other dual cab ute if you did like the video and it was helpful consider giving it a bit of a thumbs up subscribing to the channel you know the drill if that is your style let me know in the comments below what what do you reckon what do you what do you think if you got one of these on the lists are you looking at something else let me know down below but as always guys i hope that you have an amazing day and i will see you in the next video cheers guys